What do you think the mood would be like around the Bruins going into a, a game five tonight in Boston? Well, I think especially after what happened last year against Florida, uh, they have to be thinking uh, how important this game is. And that's the, that's what I would do with the uh, if I was there in Jim Montgomery's spot, is just you know make sure that the guys know the importance of this game and not to let it slip because what you do is you give momentum to the other team and uh, the other team gets to go home with that momentum and uh, that's how series can can change quickly. Claude, we were talking about the messaging with, with star players or any players. Like when you're struggling at this point in the season, what could the messaging be from a coach? Does it make sense to talk to them? Like, is it the strong conversation? Is it the pat on the back? How do you kind of relay something that they already know, which is they need more. They need to do more. Well, there's no doubt. I've, I've actually had to do that uh, uh, before in the playoffs with some players and had to take them aside and have a good chat with them. And, you know, you, you got to explain to them the, the impact that they have on the hockey club and the, what they need to bring in order to be successful. And, the, you know, you're allowed to demand a little bit more of them. That's part of your job. And part of their job is to bring a little bit more. And I think that's what the Leafs have to do right now is not only as individuals, but even as a group. Uh, I didn't I didn't mind game two and I didn't mind game three of the Leafs because I think game three could have gone either way. But game one and four, uh, to me, they were not close to the team that they should be. And that's where, you know, you got to question yourself as far as, you know, what are we and, and what do we need to do to be successful? And uh, I know the fans are, are impatient and rightfully so. And uh, it doesn't matter whether the players feel the heat or not. You have a job to do. And if you're going to change the narratives, it's up to you to take charge and go out there and do it. And that's the kind of message that the players should be getting and the players should be, I guess, sharing amongst themselves. You know, you, you deserve what you get. And right now, it just hasn't been good enough. Claude, how would you uh, approach the in-game adjustments? We, when you're playing the same team over and over again, obviously back and forth in between e each other's buildings, but you're seeing you know, the power play setup. You're seeing how a team handles the neutral zone and how their star players are playing. Is it critical for a guy like Sheldon Keefe to, to have subtle changes or maybe adjustments, even matchups, uh, to kind of get that upper hand if you're on the road? Well, a couple of things is, first of all, you don't change what you perceive as your system as a team, but you do make those adjustments. There's adjustments going on all the time. And as you know, uh, in a series of, of seven games, uh, when you're playing the same team, uh, teams are making adjustments against the power play and vice versa. So it becomes a little tougher as, as you move along, but it doesn't mean that you can't make certain adjustments along the way. And I think the one thing I've noticed, and I said right from the get-go of this series, if the Leafs weren't going to get on the inside, they weren't going to have a chance to win. And when I look at game two, I look at game three, the chances they had were from getting on the inside. Game one and four, uh, I think a lot of it was played on the outside. And so you can't keep you know, going back and forth. you got to stick with what's been working. And I think for them, if they're a goal-scoring team, which they have been, which they're known as, they got to find ways to get on the inside, get pucks to the net, uh, and create some scoring chances. And the last game I watched, I don't think they created much because, again, they, they were kept to the outside and they got to find a way. Part of it is the players. Part of it is also the coaching staff that has to figure out a way how, how to get on the inside of these guys and what you need to do. So, it's uh, again, you can't just blame one group or the other. I think it's both of them that have to be uh, better at making those adjustments. Is that a danger, Claude, when, when you've got some offensive players? All we talk about all year is how these guys can create and score, and now they're not. Mike Johnson always talks about it. This isn't, this isn't a defense problem, goalie. It's special teams, and they can't score goals. So how do you make that adjustment where it's like we got to score more and at the same time not cheat? There's really no simple recipe, is there? It's like you've got to have a ground-and-pound game, and if you want to cheat, cheat offensively, and start floating in the neutral zone, you might get clubbed out there 7 nothing. Well, I, I think you know enough. You've played long enough in this league to, to understand one thing. And for me, in 82 games, it's really, really hard to expect the same out of everybody, right? Every night, you're going you're gonna to have some ups, you're going to have some downs, and uh, it's regular season games. But when it comes to the playoffs, 
you have to have the ability to elevate your game because it's a seven game series. You can't afford to be a passenger. You can't afford to get a free pass on certain nights. You got to show up every night and teams that are successful have that going on. And, uh, you know, again, in 82 games, no matter how much a coach wants that, uh, it's impossible to have. But you have to expect that from your team if you aspire to to win a Stanley Cup. You're going to have to expect your players to show up night in, night out. And uh, and I think that's what, the, when you look at most teams that have won the Stanley Cup, they've been able to do that. With Claude Julian, Game 5, Lee Bruins tonight, um, throughout your career, you would have had games, big games, where you're going into it without a key player um, let's let's use Patrice Bergeron as an example. You're going into a massive playoff game, and you know Bergeron's not playing. Your your players know he's not playing. That's likely the case tonight with Matthews. He may play, but it's it looks like it's leaning towards him not playing. If you were Sheldon Keefe, and again you've been in these positions, do do you address the elephant in the room? Like how, how do you how do you talk to the the players, and how do you approach the topic of your best player not being available tonight? Well, to me, it's pretty simple. You have to give the guys an opportunity to elevate their game, guys stepping up. There's going to be guys that are going to have to take his ice time and everything else. It's an opportunity for guys to show that they can elevate their game and they can still win without a guy like him. This is a challenge the coach has to give to the team. Uh, it's been done before. You've seen teams do it. Uh, even the Leafs have done it this year, you know, at times mm -hmm. without those players. So, why not do it again? Why can't somebody step up? And, and it's not just about one player. It could be about two or three players and you get unsung heroes on different games. Somebody has to do it. And it's a challenge to the whole team. And uh, that's what I would do as a coach is say, listen, guys, that's one thing we can't control is whether he can play or not. But what we can control is the, the rest of our play and what we can bring. And it's an opportunity for somebody here to, to be the hero tonight and does somebody want it bad enough I think it's a matter of, of willing wanting it and uh, that's what somebody has to do if he's not in the lineup Claude we've talked about the Leafs and what they're not doing what do you see Boston doing so well what has made them so successful in this series so far well you know I see a team right now that believes in you know they're I'm going to say their system or their way of playing and they believe in continuing to do that and they're doing exactly what I said uh, again uh, a while ago if we can keep this uh, scoring team to the outside if we can make it hard for them to get to our net and we just are patient uh, we're going to get our opportunities and you know you get guys like Marshawn who stepped up and then played well uh, I'm telling you right now if if uh, the Bruins were down 3-1 right now people would probably be uh, wondering what Pasternak uh, has mm -hmm. been doing this whole series because not that he hasn't been great, but he hasn't produced to the level that they're used to. So being on the winning side of things really helps. And uh, what you're seeing right now is uh, the guys, the star players, the McAvoy's, you know, the Marshawns, and even other guys that, you know, have had to step up. Coyle, uh, who's had to step into Bergeron's uh, uh, shoes, I guess, and, and mm -hmm. other guys that uh, have been able to uh, replace the Kretschies that have been gone. They're doing a pretty good job, but they're playing their game. They believe in, in what you know their system is and what has given them success. And I think they're being able to bring that more than the Leafs have been able to bring their game. We close Julian Game Five, Leafs Bruins tonight, and you know the lone carryover from your Cup win in 2011 is Brad Marchand, and you know that that team obviously had. Bergeron, Chara, Mark Recchi was there. A lot of, you know, grizzled veterans, Sean Thornton, uh, among others. And, you know, we, we've heard for years about the culture established by Chara that was bought into by Bergeron and Krejci and obviously Marshawn. And now he's still there. He's wearing the C. He's playing at a level that is higher than anyone else in the series. He's been phenomenal. Um, what can you tell, tell us about, you know, when he got to the league, what you envisioned he could turn into. And now when you consider maybe how that original analysis was on Marshawn, considering what he's doing now, like what, what do you make of his career and, and how is he continuing to play so well? Well, I think in his first full season, uh, he started off on the fourth line. And I remember him coming in and we expected him to grind, to give us some energy and to, to get his nose dirty. And uh, as the year went on, he just progressed to the point where 
I kept moving him up in the lineup. By the end of the year, as you know, he was playing with Bergeron and Recchi. And uh, even in game seven, he scored two goals in that final game. This is a, a young player that just kind of worked his way into the lineup. And not only into the lineup, but moved up the uh, to the top line by the end of the uh, by the end of the playoffs. So what we figured uh, he would be probably a good third liner grinder. I think over the years he started showing that skill level that maybe developed along the way, or maybe that we didn't even quite see at the beginning. But uh, nonetheless, he's turned himself into a really good player. I know I know for a fact. You know we we end up spending a lot of time. He and I in my office chatting about some of the things that he was doing earlier on in his career that was getting him in trouble. And, uh, you know, he was always very receptive. And it was just with time and experience that he's been able to kind of stabilize himself uh, without losing his identity. But uh, he's turned into a really good leader because he's had great examples along the way. As you mentioned, uh, you know, the Sheras, then he ended up with Bergeron. Ricky was there, uh, Chris Kelly. There was mm-hmm. tons of great uh, leaders that he could uh, learn from, and he's been able to do that. And now it's a matter of him uh, hopefully uh, teaching others to, to continue that tradition. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one tonight. Again, in 2013, your Bruins were up 3-1 on the Leafs. We know that that went to 7. 2018, the Bruins were up 3-1 on the Leafs. That went to Game 7. Uh, I don't know if you can pick up on any vibes this time of that possibly happening, but uh, do you recall that kind of scenario and what, what the mood was like around the Bruins, your Bruins in 2013 when the Leafs did push that to seven, considering you guys were in the driving seat driver's seat really leading into this series and, and certainly through the first four games. Well, absolutely. And, you know, like uh, even game seven, where I don't think everybody knows this, but uh, after we lost game six in Toronto, it was going back home to play game seven. And uh, somehow we had plane uh, issues uh, after game six. We ended up sleeping in Toronto. We ended up scrambling to find a hotel and even having a meal uh, while Toronto made its way to Boston and uh, were mm-hmm. waiting there. For us, so uh, we had a. Not only was it a challenge of of having to come back from uh, being up three one, but it's a matter of winning Game Seven after uh, having those odds go against you. So you know, falling behind in the third period and then being able to come back, I think showed a lot of character from our from our guys. You know, they they never gave up. They found a way to win, and uh, those are those are great memories. But uh, you know, at the same time, I've been down three one where. We've been able to come back, and that was with Montreal in my first stint there against Boston. We're down mm-hmm. 3-1. Sometimes it's just a matter of winning that next game, and uh, I'm going to tell you, if Toronto wins that game tonight, uh, all of a sudden, do the doubts go into Boston's minds as far as is this going to be a repeat of last year? Now, if they win tonight, uh, they go back to Toronto, hopefully with some momentum and uh, mm. giving themselves a chance to create a game seven. You never know. Again, like, I mean, we can predict all we want. Uh, this is, the, the uh, I guess, the mystery of sports is that you have surprises all the time and uh, it creates the excitement and uh, it makes us uh, look bad at times because our predictions aren't always aren't always right. Absolutely. We'll see. That's why they play the games.